What this CR10 really needs is a filament runout sensor. When you have a large build volume like on the CR10, you're obviously going to want to print larger things. Well, when you print larger things, you use more filament, sometimes over a one kilogram spool, and that's when it's really nice to have a filament runout sensor. The sensor will take care of all the babysitting for you, it will pause the print, you can come back, load some filament later, and then it will resume the print right where it left off. Now it is pretty straightforward to get it installed on a CR10, but you are going to need a few specific things. So today I'm going to show you how to use an LCD cable adapter and a standard end stop switch to get your sensor installed. Now I am assuming that you've already flashed your bootloader and prefer that you've upgraded the version of Marlin that runs on this printer, but if you haven't, there's a video on how to do that here. And also I am using the original CR10 and the first version of the Melzi board, but a lot of printers are going to be pretty similar, so it should help you on a few different machines. Now let's get started and configure the hardware. So to add a filament sensor to the CR10, we're going to have to have access to the pins that support the LCD screen, but we want to be able to still use the LCD screen. I'm just using this as an example. So we could take a PCB and solder together some pins and some headers and break those three pins out that we need, but you really don't need to do that because you can get these adapters that are very affordable. And this is what that adapter looks like. You can pick these up from a couple different vendors. You can use them for a bed leveling sensor or a filament sensor. This side plugs into the board, and then you'll plug your LCD into this side, and you'll use this for your in-stop switch for your filament runout sensor. So we'll take off the bottom panel on the control box. It's just these five screws. Covers off, now we need to take these four screws loose and loosen up the power supply. With the power supply loosed, you can remove it. Be careful not to pull any of these wires and make sure it's not plugged in. This is the first gen CR10, so your board might be a little different, but hopefully it's close enough that this process will still work. So let's remove the LCD cable from the board. Now to use a regular end stop with this adapter, we're going to have to change the power in the ground wires. We need to move the ground wire to the outside and the power to the center. There's a look at the adapter to show you how it's wired up. And here's how the plug will look to use that adapter. Now sometimes you can reuse these. If you're real careful, you can pull the pins and remove the wires and flip them around, but most of the time it's probably a good idea just to replace this connector altogether. We'll attach these wires to the adapter, and then we'll attach the LCD cable to the front of the adapter, and then the back of the adapter will go on the board where the LCD cable was. So the adapter's on right there, it should be a nice snug fit. Now we can route the wires out the back of the box. I've got the wires pulled through, now we can put the power supply back in and close up shop. Now that everything's back together, let's go ahead and power up, make sure the LCD screen's still good, which it looks like it is. And if you cable up your end stop switch, the light should trigger when the switch gets triggered. Now we can install our end stop switch in this 3D printed case that I like from Thingiverse. I'm just going to use a couple of M3 screws and some nuts on the back. It'll set in here just like this. And there's the whole thing put together. So the hardware is all done, but there are a few things that we need to configure inside Marlin to make all of this work. So let's head over to the computer and get that done now. Now we need to make sure that Marlin is set up correctly to use the filament sensor. Remember, you have to have a bootloader on this board before you can upload fresh Marlin, but I'll show you how to do that in another video. So this is a fresh download of 1.1.9 Marlin, so we'll go ahead and configure it for the CR10. So let's go to Example Configurations, Creality, CR10. We'll copy all four of these files, go back to the main directory level, paste them here, and replace files and destination. That's going to give us a rough configuration to use for the CR10 that should work just fine. Now we'll open up the marlin.ino file. You will have to have the Arduino IDE link in the description. So let's head into configuration.h. You can search for runout and currently the filament runout sensor is not enabled. So we'll uncomment this line. We're going to leave all of this default for now until we see how the sensor works. It's telling you that it's going to run the M600 script when the filament sensor triggers. So we also need to make sure that our park settings are correct. So let's search for park. The nozzle park is enabled, so that's good, but we also need to set where the location of that park is. I like mine to be in the front right corner. So I'm actually gonna flip these two. I'm gonna do X max minus 10 and Y minimum plus 10. The Z should be fine at 20. So we should be good there. 
Now let's head into configuration underscore ADV. And let's do a find on M600. So in this example CR10 config, it already looks like that M600 has been set up, this advanced pause feature, but you do have to have this enabled to be able to use the filament runout sensor. So definitely check and make sure it's configured correctly for your machine. Now there's one more change that we need to make to get this to work, and we need to change that in the Melzi board pen config file. There's one for the Creality machine. So we'll go to the pull down over here, scroll all the way down, and you'll see pens Melzi Creality. Click on that. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have the fill runout pen. We need to configure that to pen 27. And that should be all that we have to change to get this sensor to work. Now remember, if you're uploading to a CR10, you're going to have to have the Sanguino board library and the UG Live library because of the LCD screen. All of that is included in the CR10 firmware video. But if you have all those libraries installed, you can just go to Tools, make sure you're on board Sanguino, make sure you have the 12.8416 MHz processor selected, make sure your machine is plugged in via USB, select the COM port that your board is on, and hit Upload. Now that the upload is complete, let's head into Pronterface and start a test print to make sure the switch is working as we expect it to. So we'll connect up to COM6. Let's do a reset on EEPROM because we got this warning up here. Let's do M502 to pull in the default settings, and then M500 to save it. And we'll load up a file, and let's hit print. And it looks like M600 did not trigger, so our logic is probably flip-flopped. If we trigger the switch now, it has triggered M600. So all we need to do is change that in Marlin. So we'll disconnect from Pronterface, back into Marlin, configuration.h, we'll find runout, and we'll change this false to true. And we can re-upload. The upload's complete again, so now we should be good to go. So now since I'm pretty sure that everything's set up correctly and it's going to work as expected, let's go ahead and load some filament. And we'll just let the filament sensor ride on the filament as it goes into the extruder. And then we can load the filament in the extruder. Filament sensor's in place. Let's go ahead and kick off another test print. So it looks like our Benchy has started to print successfully. Let's go ahead and clip the filament and trigger the sensor. The switch just fell off and triggered. It's running the M600 command. The LCD screen is waiting for you to resume the print. So we'll go ahead and load the filament up again. It's currently kicking out all the filament that's in the Bowden tube. The unload was successful. We'll go ahead and pull this out. Run our filament back through our sensor, back into the Bowden tube, and we can hit the button on the LCD to resume. It's going to do a pretty lengthy purge to make sure it's loaded into the tube correctly. And if that looks good, you can either continue, or you can purge some more if the color hasn't changed to what you want it to be. So we're going to go ahead and continue. And it's going to go right back to printing the Benchy. And another Benchy has been saved thanks to Marlin and the filament runout sensor option. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.